Hey everybody. Today, Rado runs through Among the Stars Revival, which is a brand new expansion for the Among the Stars series. It's on Kickstarter right now that you might be interested in taking a look at. So I'm going to do my best to let you know what it's all about. Now, this is an interesting expansion because it works as you know the latest new set of cards that you can add to your base copy of Among the Stars. Or it works as a completely standalone two player only game. So if you get nothing else but Among the Stars, you can look at this as a kind of like a taster where you can start to learn some of the basics of how Among the Stars works and you can decide whether maybe you want to invest more and get some of the other expansion, you know, Among the Stars and Among the Stars the Ambassador and Among the Stars, oh, I forget the name of the one that is like the collection of all the different promos that have been released. There's a lot of Among the Stars content out there. And interestingly, because I've actually done a few run-throughs for Among the Stars in the past, I'm not going to spend a heck of a lot of time going over the basics of how ATS plays. In this run-through, I'm really going to assume you know how to play Among the Stars, and I'm just going to be showing what's new with this expansion. So, if you want to watch and learn how the regular game works, you can go on ahead and hit the uh, link that's right there on the screen and learn some basics. And if you want to do that, you can do so in 5, 4, 3, 2, one. Okay, so I'm going to assume you know your basics, uh, you know your way around the stars, you are comfortable among the stars. Let's get going with Revival. Now, I'm going to be doing this as a two-player run-through specifically because if you buy Among the Stars the Revival as a standalone game, it has a specific new two-player variant. You don't play it the way it's been done in the past where everybody has their hand of cards and you do a card draft and you keep on handing you know, those hands of cards around from player to player to player. Instead, the way it works is there is a common collection of cards that's on screen, or on screen, on the table. I'm looking at a little screen on my camera. On the table that's available to all players all the time. And so, I'm going to be showing how that works. Basically, as part of setup, again, maybe if, if you get, this is basically everything you get. You know, here's about half of the cards that come with the expansion, here's the other half. So in, a, in an average game, you're going to have access to about half of them. You sort them up in a special way, you divide them into four stacks of 12 cards each randomly shuffled up because the game is going to take place over four rounds and then you set it up to start playing in the first round which means we draw six cards and like I said, instead of the regular game where everybody gets their own hand of cards, this is kind of a common hand that's here for everybody to see. So it's just here's the random six cards that came out. Trading Post, Residential Area, Military Headquarters, the U Cannon, the Venture House, and I think maybe my favorite card of this new expansion, Swiss Cheese. Now, I should say, by the way, you may notice, temporary artwork. Everything you're seeing here is placeholder. I mean, these are all placeholder pieces of art from other Among the Stars stuff, like, you know, New Dawn and, and whatnot. And, um, you know, so uh, bear in mind, everything is placeholder, but, you know, the gameplay is not. And that's what we're here to demonstrate today. So, as part of setup of, you know, this is my, this is my first of the four rounds, the first year's cards are coming from here. Here's the six that are on display. Now everybody in the game starts with a main reactor, like the main game, two energy cubes, and ten bucks. When you're playing this new Among the Stars Revival two-player game, there are no specific race abilities. That's something you'd have to get the full game for. So, Jen and I don't start out as the humans or the minerines or whatever. We are just, because um, we're building additional star bases that don't belong to any particular race. So we don't get any racial special powers at the beginning of the game. All right, so everybody starts with 10 bucks, two energy. Now, another thing comes out as part of setup. There are these, I forget what they're called, these, uh, oh, you know, the game comes with six of them, these brackets. And what happens is, let's say you were playing a game with more than two. You know, uh, what, so what that would mean is, I put one of these to my station on the left and one to my station on the right. And then I put an alien advisor in each of them. And this is all set up randomly. And so what this means is, you know, here's my station. During play, oops, I, and I, I do it like this. And I would put little markers that represent the uh, different aliens. There's kind of this tug of war that's going on. At the beginning of the game, you know, here's the, uh, you know, the Franzi marker. And, I, you know, the, uh, the Franzi alien race has not really sided with me or my neighbor over here. You know, or this one, you know, the, uh, the, uh, the Hythians 
they haven't sided with me or with my neighbor in, you know, in a counterclockwise direction. And over the course of the game, every time I build a red location, they, I get a victory point and they move closer to me. But then if my neighbor builds a, 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 a in this case, a, a, a military card, a, a red card, then it would come back over to, to my neighbor and they'd get a victory point. And then they might play another military card and it goes over to them. Now what happens is that we keep on doing this tug of war, trying to get this alien race on our side by doing what it is they want. And then at the end of the round, if, um, if, it's on, if it's on my side, I will get to take advantage of whatever this special race is, so, you know, this special alien power is. So the, uh, the, the Frosty might have helped me, but the Hyathans, you know, they might be neutral because they might have been pushed back and forth so many times that they end up in the center and they won't help me or my counterclockwise neighbor. Whereas in this case, I stole the, uh, the, the Frosty from my neighbor and got their power myself. So that's a big part of the game is this new thing where you are very, very lockstep com concerned about what your neighbor to your immediate left and your immediate right is doing because you're, you're fighting over control over these alien advisors, they're called. Now, in a two-player game, the way it works is we put two of them out. And so, you know, here I am, I'm player one, I'm, and here's player two, she's, you know, Jen and me. Both of us are fighting over both of these instead of, you know, because there's only the two of us. And so these are, oops, I got these markers backwards. Here's the Minarine. And if at the end of the round, I have gotten the Minarine on my side, basically when the next year starts, I will be able to look at the six cards that came out, dump one of them and pull one out of the discard pile and put it back in here, which could be a very valuable thing if there's something in the discard pile that I desperately want. And on the flip side, this one, if we get the Humorines, the human race on my side at the end of the round, I score an extra victory point. But if I built one of each of the five colors, each of the five types of card on my space station, I'll actually get two victory points. So there's just straight up points. And how do I get this? Well, I get the Humorines on my side by discarding a card to build a power reactor or to get money. I get the Minorines on my side by building a yellow uh, a, a yellow, uh, what do you call it? A, a, a yellow card. So in this game we're going to be playing throughout the game, Jen and I are going to have a much more vested interest in building yellow cards than normal because we're fighting for control over the Minarines. And it's now much more worthwhile than it is in a normal game to be to discard cards to make money or get power stations because that can give us control over the Humorine faction. So this is a big part of the game, this new tug of war that has been introduced. Now I'm going to try and demonstrate that because I am now going to play through the first of four rounds, the first of four years. So you ready? Let's get going. I am the first player. And actually, that's another interesting thing. This game now introduces the concept of player turn order because everybody doesn't do things simultaneously like has always been in the case with Among the Stars in the past. So I'm the first player. I can buy any one of these. And seeing as how, like I was just saying, yellow is particularly valuable in this game, there's one yellow card that came out. I'm going to build that sucker. It cost me three bucks. And by the way, at the beginning of every round, everybody gets 10 more bucks. So I paid three. Here's my two and change. And I'm going to build a trading post. As always, you build adjacent to an existing card you've already put down. It cost me three bucks. Now, it doesn't give me any victory points right now, but... This yellow background means that this is going to be an effect that um, you know impacts me at the end of the game. Whenever you take a you know a card that has a white background on the text happens immediately. The yellow background happens at the end of the game. And this one says when um, I build a trade post. Well, actually, first of all, something does happen immediately when I build a trade post. Put a ship in my station for each trade post I have. Now, I've only got one trade post. So that means, now this is another new feature in this expansion, ships. These little tokens, you can see the game comes with a whole bunch of them. I now, because I've built a trading post, a trade ship is going to dock with my station. And um, at the end of the game, I'm gonna get one victory point for every two ships I've got at my station. So. This is a whole new concept. What happens is when a new ship has to dock at your station, and it doesn't matter whether it's because of something I did or maybe something Jen would do that would force it on me, I now have to put this adjacent to one of my existing cards. And what that means, if I put it here, I can never build a card in this space. This space is occupied for the purposes of building. Now, it's still an empty space for the purposes of some special ability cards, but it's definitely empty. I, or, you know, it's, it's occupied. I cannot build a ship because there's now this ship that is docked there. Now, I can put this anywhere. I'll, I'll just go ahead and put it here next to my main reactor. Or what the heck, I'm going to put it over here. 
because you know I don't have that much uh, space in that direction anyway so this means I won't want to build too far in that direction because I literally cannot build in this space and now see it's interesting normally getting these ships docked on your station is a real pain in the butt because they can vary and they can really impact your ability to expand in the way you want. This is a hugely spatial game. You're always trying to build all your pieces of the station in just the right spot. And so if Jen comes along and you know, and I've got a thing where I want to put something adjacent to this to score some points, Jen might just slap a ship down there and all of a sudden, oh no, I can't build there anymore. But because I have a trading post, I now want to get ships. Normally you don't want them. Normally they're a, a bane, but now for me they're a boon because at the end of the game, for every two of them I got, I score a victory point. Okay. So, but now the important thing is remember, I built this yellow because now that I built a yellow, I built a yellow location, the minerine are look favorably upon me, and now they've moved over onto my side. And every time they move in your direction, you score a victory point. So I just scored a point. Yeah, I mean, which is interesting because the card itself didn't give me any points, but I got one because the minerine said, oh, well done. A, uh, you know, a yellow uh, building, you know, because yellow is all about economy. That's what their alien race is all about. And so I'm on their side. And now if I can keep them on my side at the end of the round, I will get their advisor ability because right now the advisor likes me more than it likes Jen. And actually, I should say one more thing. The game, obviously, these are prototype. These little, I'm sure they'll look very pretty, like everything in Among the Stars. Among the Stars is a gorgeous looking game, so I'm sure these will look nice too. The base game, the uh, when you buy this uh, Among the Stars Revival expansion, will come with just little cardboard chits that you can use to represent the aliens. But I am going to show it a different way. Just as an aside, recently, uh, Artifia Games released the Among the Stars miniature pack, which um, comes with all these really awesome, hugely gorgeous detailed bust minis which you can use with New Dawn and I'm going to be doing a run through for New Dawn before too long so you can see how these guys work in there but they can also be used so instead of using those little cardboard chits I'm actually going to say here's the minerine that's moved over and he's favored me and meanwhile the humorine is sitting here in the middle so that's just as an aside I gotta say these busts are just Stunning looking. They are so cool, so detailed, and um, you know, and and again, it's Artipia's long-term goal as they keep releasing more games in the Among the Stars universe. You can use these miniatures in every one of their games, and with this expansion, you can use them in Among the Stars. You can also use them in New Dawn, um, sold separately. Okay, so anyway. So that was my first move. I built a yellow, got the minerines on my side, scored a point, and now it is Jen's turn. Now you'll notice, no more cards came out. So Jen has to choose from one of the remaining five. And let's see now, what is she gonna build? <laughs> let's see here, okay, so we got the U cannon. This is three points plus one for each um, power cube on a power reactor still in your station. So for two bucks, she would unfortunately have to use a cube to build this, but then she would get a cube, you know, she'd have one cube left, so, she would, um, you know, she'd get four points for this totally, total. Um, although it's interesting. You know what I think Jen's going to do? Yeah, I think so. Jen's going to pay her a chance. She's not going to build this. She's going to hope I don't take this. I don't sneak this away. Jen is going to do something else. What is she going to, she will take, oh, I don't know. Um, let's see. Number, if you have exactly that many, she will take... The military headquarters. All right. Now, remember, in Among the Stars, whenever you take a card, you can pay its cost to, you know, in this case, X, where X is blah, blah, blah. You can pay its cost to add it to your space station, or instead, you can discard it. You can either discard it for three bucks, or you can discard it to build another power reactor. Jen's going to discard this thing, and instead of getting three bucks, she is going to build a second power reactor for herself. All right, and of course, a power reactor, in addition to discarding card, costs one buck. So it costs her one buck, so now she's down. One, two, three, four. Okay. And she's got power reactor, so there's two more power cubes. So now she's got more power that she could power more modules. She, um, right, and that she doesn't get victory points. She instead just gets more of these power cubes. And now, interestingly, remember, um, the humorines are very impressed whenever you discard a card, either to get money or a power reactor. So the humorines have just sided with Jen. She just scored a point for getting them on her side, and now potentially at the end of the round, she could get this advisor bonus. Now, I might still steal this away from her because the tug of war has only begun. 
So I've taken a turn, Jen's taken a turn, and now it's my turn again. But basically, the, these go in rounds. Um, starting with the start player, everybody takes a, a turn, and then that, before the next round starts, that's when you refill and two new cards come out. And look at this, another yellow card came out, and another military card. And actually, this has worked out well for Jen, because now there are three cards out that require energy, and so Jen's got all this energy she could use. And so now, we can continue. It is my turn again. Now, at the beginning of the second round, Jen will be first player. Then I'll be first player, and then Jen will be first player for the final round. So, it's pretty evenly spread, because there's a big advantage to being the first player, but there's also a big advantage to being the last player, too, because if you're the last player, you might be, you get the final word on these little area control games that are happening. But anyway, so, you know what? I want to keep control of yellow, so I'm going to go on ahead and grab this investment agency, the only other yellow that's out. So I have this built before Jen gets a chance to pull the minerines away from me. So I'm gonna build this. It costs two bucks. So there goes two more of my bucks. I've burned through half of my starting capital. And where am I gonna put this? Now, this is immediately gonna give me two points. Bip, bip. And um, at the end of the game, I will get plus one point for every three bucks. Now, normally, at the end of the game, you get a, do a point for every three bucks. Now, because I have an investment agency, I get two points. So it makes it much more worth my while to stockpile and get a lot of money. Now, where am I going to put this? I'll just go on ahead and put it there, just arbitrarily. Okay, so that's my second. And now, unfortunately, I built another yellow location, but since the minerines are all the way over here, they can't move any farther because they're already on my side. So unfortunately, I do not get a victory point for having built a second yellow. But, but more importantly, if I had left this up here, Jen probably would have built it, and then she would have pulled the minerines away from me. Okay, so that was that. Now it's Jen's turn. She gets to build another building. And I think so, yep, yeah, Jen's really happy about this. This was her plan. She is now gonna build the U Cannon. Uh, by the way, every one of these cards I'm showing you are, are you know, new cards that come in this expansion. I'm not showing any of the basic cards from the base game. This costs her two bucks and one cube. So pays two bucks, one cube, and she will go on ahead and she'll slap it down right there. Now, she gets three points immediately, plus one point for every cube on her power reactor. So one, two, three, she just made six points. One, two, three, four, five, six, and Jen takes an early lead. Okay, so that was her, and now we're at the end of the second round, so two more cards come out. A cruise company, and an administrative HQ. And now I'm still the first player, so I still get to go first. Now what do I want to do? <laughs> Let's see here. Interestingly, the cruise company, you know, this is another, this, this concept of the ships, this is definitely a new feature of the game. And this one, if I build this for each adjacent location, um, so if I build this right here, it has two adjacent locations, um, put a ship in another player station. So if I build this, I could send ships over to Jen and that could scuttle her expansion. But as it is right now, Jen doesn't, you know, a lot of the cards in this game are all about build adjacent to something else. Jen doesn't have any adjacency building right now, so I don't think this is particularly interesting to me. If anything, hell, I would love for Jen to build this thing, because then she would send a ship over to me, and remember, I get a point at the end of the game for every two ships I've got. So I definitely don't want to build that cruise company. Um, but let's see here. You know what I do want to do, though? Jen's now, she has a whole bunch of power cubes she wants to get spent before the end of the game so that she can score bonus points. And Because remember, at the end of the game, if you've cleared out all of your energy cubes, you get bonus points for having a completely functioning uh, chain reaction. So I think I probably want to build this or this because I'll start using some of my energy cubes. Let's see. So, and you know what? I got to say, I love Swiss cheese. I think I already mentioned this is my favorite new card. I'm going to build that. Cost me two bucks and one energy cube. So I'm now down, I'm getting almost broke. I'm down to three bucks. But fortunately, I spent one of my two energy cubes. And now remember, um, when you build, you have to build within two spaces of where that energy cube came from. One, two, this is legal. And now, Swiss cheese, it immediately gives me two points. One, two, and at the end of the game, I will get two points for every Swiss cheese hole, for every empty space I've got. And what that means is, like say, if I never fill this space up, and I build a card here and here, this will be a hole that scores me two points. This is probably going to be another place where I want to put a hole, because I can't build here anyway, because there's a ship. So, getting more ships with a trade post, plus a Swiss cheese, that's a really nice combo. These two cards work really nicely together, and it's starting to build my overall expansion strategy. 
Okay, so that was my turn. Now it is Jen's turn again. She gets to buy something else. And she does want to use up all these energy cubes. So I think she'll go on ahead and get this def Oh, wait, actually, actually, this is really nice. This defense perimeter, um, it'll score her four points plus uh, costs one uh, less. So it only costs three if you have more ships in your station than each other player. Now, unfortunately, Jen doesn't. So she's going to have to pay the full three plus one cube. But if Jen had more ships than me, then um, you'll be, right, is this right? Yeah, cost one less if you have more ships. So if you have more ships, it's easier for you to set up a defensive perimeter and therefore it's cheaper. So interestingly, Jen probably wants to get this thing built because I didn't notice if I had built this, I could build this for cheaper because I've got more ships. So I think Jen does want to grab this. And now I'm kind of regretting, I probably should have grabbed this, um, although I really love the Swiss cheese too. But anyway, so Jen's gonna go on ahead and build this. And with that, she'll just go on ahead and slap it down there. It costs her three bucks. I right, guess uh, two change, and it costs another cube. She'll go on ahead and take one of her cubes because it's close by. And now she gets four points. Um, and unfortunately, she did not get the discount because she actually, I have more ships than her, so it was harder. But anyway, so she gets four points. One, two, three, four. Okay, so that was that. And now two more cards come out. And these are the last two cards that are going to come out this first year. As you can see, this stack is empty. These other stacks are for years two, three, and four. So now we're just going to keep taking turns until we burn through all these remaining cards. Okay, and it's my turn. What do I want? Let's see here. All right, so that cruise company. I'm still hoping Jen builds that so that she will give me another ship so that I can take advantage of the trading post. What else do I want to do? Oh, no more yellow cards came out. So that's interesting. I have locked this in. Jen has no chance now to take the minerines from me because no more yellow cards came out. She'll have to wait for future rounds and try to build yellow cards then to pull the minerines away. And now here's the interesting thing. The, adv the advantage I get of the minerines is a card that had previously been discarded, I'll be able to bring back into the game in the next round. So. And also, I want to start trashing some cards to make money or power stations so that I could pull the Humorines away from Jen. So maybe it makes sense for me to start trashing some cards. Um, particularly because I want to have a lot of money. At the end of the game, I get more points for leftover cash. So it might make sense. Are there any of these cards that Jen would really like that I should now trash to make some money? Particularly because I'm down to my last three bucks anyway. All right, so Administrative HQ is, um, all right, it costs. Um, money equal to the current year. So this would only cost one buck plus one point. So you get a point for every blue you currently built. And so this would be nice after these two blues have been built, building this. So maybe I want to start trying to build these to get this thing. Let's see, what's the, this guy, they, all right. So three bucks cost three points. Each player, including you may choose. Oh, I want to build this. Yeah, baby. I'm not going to trash. I'm going to build it. It takes my last $3. And so now I'm completely broke. And I'm going to put it out here because remember, I want to build holes. I want to make a Swiss cheese station. So I'm almost have made my first hole. So each, so I build it. Uh, it's worth three points. One, two, three. And each player, including you, may choose to gain up to two victory points. And for each point gained, put a ship in your station. I'm totally going to do it. I'm going to get one, two points by adding two more ships to my station because I want to. I'll put one where I'm planning to make my Swiss cheese hole because I, I, you know, I'm never planning to build anything there anyway. And where else am I going to put a hole? Let's see. This is probably going to be a hole, which means I'm going to have to build up around like this. So I'll put one here. And then potentially this is a hole too. No. Yeah. So I'll put one here as well. So I'm trying to get, I'm going to try to make a hole here, here, and here. So I've got three holes so I can score my Swiss cheese three times at the end of the game. I'm sure they'll come up with a different name than Swiss cheese at the, when the game ships. But I got to say, I love the name Swiss cheese. All right. So I just scored two points. Now, Jen has this option as well. And I think, yeah, she's not too terrible. She'll take a couple ships on as well. One, two points. She will also take two ships and she'll just put them here and here. So she cannot expand in this direction. Those ships are cutting her off, but she did to take two points. Okay, so I've built that. All right, now it's Jen's turn. We only have a few more builds before it's over. What does Jen want to build? Let's see here. Now this is for building adjacent to purple and yellow. Jen hasn't built any purple or yellow spaces. So I don't think that's particularly good for her. This blue is choose a location which you have two copies of in your station, excluding power reactors, plus one for each. Oh yeah, this one's a really cool one. This is another spatial one where when you build this, 
at the end of the game, you want to have two matching places. Like, you know, Jen, if she gets the other U cannon before, and gets built before the game is over, she wants to build her U cannon very far away so that the two matching cards are super far away because the further distance between them, the more points she will get because of her courier service. So this, building this gives you like a really strong goal to chase. Um, let's see, Venture House. Uh, when you build Venture House, choose a number and um, plus two if you have exactly, at the end of the game, if you have exactly how many. So this one means you pick how many purple um, cards you want to play and you choose it now. You're like Babe Ruth making the call early in the game and if that's how many purple cards you built at the end of the game, you score two bonus points so you paid three bucks to get five points which is an awesome return. So that's a nice one. Um, let's see. But you know what? I think Jen's going to take this courier service. She's going to go ahead and slap it down here. Cost two bucks. Now it's worth nothing right now. But again, you know, maybe if she gets another courier service, if she gets another courier service and puts it very, very, very far away, the two will piggyback off each other, and that could be a really nice thing. But as it is right now, she gets no points for that. Okay, now back to me. There's only a few more builds going on. And now remember, I want to trash some cards so that I can take the humorine away from Jen. Let's see. Now, Jen's got a blue card, so maybe she wants to do this administrative HQ. So I'm going to take this, and instead of building it, I'm going to trash it and make three bucks for myself. One, two, three. So I've got some money. And hey, look at this. I've pulled the humorines away, and that got me one victory point. All right, and so now Jen has lost this. And now, um, so now Jen's got to decide, is she going to fight for this? She'd like to keep building, but if she does, then I might pull it all the way to my side. Instead, should she trash this, trash a card? Let's see. Hmm. This residential area is obviously nicer for me because I've already got one purple and one yellow. Actually, it's too bad to be awesome to put here because it's got two yellows next to it, but I can't build right here. That's where I want to put a hole. So since this is good for me, maybe Jen wants to take this and burn this. I think she will. She will trash this card. And what the heck? She'll make three bucks. One, two, three. Um, so she's got some more money. And that pulled the humorines back. And Jen just got another point. Okay. Now, down to the final two cards for this round. Which one do I want? The cruise company will give Jen a ship um, for each adjacent location put a ship in another player. So it's really not that big a deal. Um, and this one, I mean, I, again, I would rather Jen play this on me so I get more ships so I can score more points. And the Venture House. Uh, let's see. When you build Venture House, choose a number. Yeah. Now, if I take this or I take either of these and burn them, I could pull Humorines back. But then Jen, that's the advantage of being last. Jen could pull this over. I know I'm not going to be able to take to to win the Humorines from her because Jen could still beat me. She has the final say. So I'm going to go ahead and take the Venture House and I'm going to build it, I think. And I'm going to build it right here. It costs three bucks. My last three bucks. It scores me three points immediately. One, two, three. And at the end of the game, oh, right now, and I've got to, I'll take some ship markers. I've got to call it. How many purple buildings am I going to have at the end of the game? I've already got two. You know what? I'm going to say over the course of this game, I'm going to build five purples total. One, two, three, four, five. And I put this as a reminder. At the end of the game, I will check. Did I build exactly five purple cards? If so, I'll have two more points at the end of the game. All right. So I've given myself a target. And so finally, Jen is the last player. She gets this one. And she does not want to send over any ships to me because she knows I will benefit because I've got the, uh, the Counselor Vessel. So Jen is going to take this. Instead of paying three bucks, she's going to burn it to make three more bucks. So she's rich already. And now, unfortunately, the Humorine's already all the way over. Can't come any further over. So Jen doesn't get a point for it. But, um, well, does she want to build this? Three ducks or three points? Nah, nah. She'll save the money. She'll save her money. Because, you know, because she already knows there is an investment agency. There's going to be two more of them somewhere in all these decks. So Jen knows that's coming. Jen might get a chance to build one of those investment agencies. So it's a worthwhile thing to have a lot of money. Okay, so that's it. We have built everything. Now, at the end of the round, we check and see and look. As you can see, Jen made it. She got the humans on her side, so she gets one point plus another point if she has one of every color. She only has two colors of the five, so she only gets one point, thanks to the humorines. And now my power is 
I, at the beginning of the next year, I get to look at the discard pile, take a card out of the discard pile, and replace one of the ones. So, we're ready to go into the second round. Now, in the second round, Jen is going to be first player. We put out our six cards, you know, because this is going to be our second deck. Uh, let's see. Oh, another yellow, a money shark, another trading post, a defense perimeter, and an energy spender. But now, before the second round starts, I get to use the mini rings. So if there's any of these I don't like because they might benefit Jen, or if there's any of these I really like and would like to bring back into the game, I now have to make a choice. I can pull something out of the discard and replace one of these existing ones so that I can start the game out on that foot. Because And now the other thing, these characters are going to stay here. If Jen never does anything, I'm going to have the mini for the rest of the game, and Jen's going to have these points for the rest of the game. So we have to continue the tug of war from where they left off. But you know what? That's it, folks. That was a full run-through of the first of four rounds of the new two-player variant that is available in Among the Stars Revival, which, as I'm pointing out, is on Kickstarter right now. So now, if you would like to hear some final thoughts about this new expansion slash standalone two-player version of the game, you can hit the button that's on screen right now and follow the show notes, or, or, or follow the show notes to go to Final Thoughts in 5, 4, 3, 2, one.